Today on The Storm, we're going to be talking about the ancient locomotive known as the Hype Train. The Hype Train, to put it in simple terms, it's kind of like having sex for the first time. Yeah, it's a little awkward when your partner's just kind of laying there staring at you the whole time. Kind of like that Martha Stewart flashlight rig that you set up the night before, and it just, it just kind of stares at you with its cold, dead piercing eyes. I mean, yeah, you get off and it's great, but something about it just ultimately feels unsatisfying. Dan, you can't just barge into the room and not have sex with me. The big YouTube oh, money. Yeah. Oh, oh, YouTube yeah. revenue. Yeah. I'm Zach Dawson and this is The Storm. On March 30th, Square Enix announced the release date for their long-awaited sequel to their beloved franchise, Final Fantasy. The beacon of light in a world of chaos. But now... Night has come and the land is dark. With the announcement of the game's release date, it caused rioting in major cities with the happy cries of fans. All right, maybe it wasn't that drastic, but boy, is everyone excited for this. And Square Enix didn't even stop there. There's three other cars that are connected to this hype train. These added cars of hype consist of a brand new animated movie with an all-star cast, a mobile app, for all you techie fangirls, and an anime. But knowing how far the game is from actually being released, we can only expect to see more hype cars added to this train. From this point on, you better be ready for all of the fangirls talking about the game, making rumors about the game, and just all around annoying you about everything about the game. And there is where our first issue starts. Final Fantasy's hype train is just the start of a much larger problem in both the gaming community and the film industry. To give you another example, let's talk about Star Wars Battlefront. EA is a master conductor when it comes to keeping hype trains on the rail. And they damn well knew about the gold mine that Star Wars games were and still are. So in order to bolster their sales, they bombarded the fan base with rumors, screenshots, and this beautiful piece of cinematography. Star Wars belongs to everyone who loves this amazing universe. We went back to where it all began. Visiting the Lucas archives to capture the actual models and props used in the movies was an incredibly emotional experience. The early results are truly spectacular. And EA started getting their hype train rolling from the earliest possible stages of their development. And this wouldn't be an issue, except it became an issue when EA's own hype train became their schedule. Okay, great. Now you know all of that. But what does it have to do with Final Fantasy? How could Final Fantasy fall into this same category when it's from a development team with a well-known and steeped history of holding games back that they knew weren't ready? The issue with this is even if the game fails, the company is still going to make a profit off of their pre-orders and their collector's editions alone. Why? Because two reasons. The first one being the game is offering a false sense of innovation. The game itself is being hyped for graphics, <coughs> Battlefront, and it's also being hyped for its new and unique only to this series combat style. Not to mention that this game has been in development for years. How could it possibly fail? Enter Spore. Spore was supposed to be the game changer for everything. New and innovative gameplay mechanics that no one had ever seen before. You could build creatures and watch them evolve from microscopic to macroscopic. Watch them even build civilizations, develop weird spore space travel, and then take over other civilizations. And not to mention that these worlds that you were visiting were uploaded by other players into their procedural generation machine, and there was an infinite number of possibilities. Sounds awesome, right? Spore failed miserably the year it was released. There was so much being promised for this game, but when the game was released, nothing changed. 
Spore did not fail because it was a bad game. Spore failed because the development team made so many promises, they just couldn't keep them. Even Spore had its own documentary, mobile games, and collector's editions to sell. And this isn't even an isolated incident in gaming. Duke Nukem Forever, Mass Effect 3, Daikatana, XCOM The Bureau, Red Faction Armageddon, Sim City, Sims 4, Dante's Inferno, Dead Space 3, Aliens Colonial Marines, and now the infamous E.T. the Extraterrestrial? Every single one of these games was hyped to high hell and back. Why? Because they're just milking our wallets with empty promises and shallow gameplay. And that leads us into the second reason why this happens. This isn't just the gaming industry's fault. The entire community as a whole is it wrong with this. Not under understanding the concepts of pre-orders, early access, or whatever else these mad geniuses are coming up with to make you feel like you're being part of the process. And in order to secure your pre-release, these companies will show you in-game footage, out-game footage, bot reviews, and shitty CGI. They'll try to sell you on graphics, and then they'll try to sell you on a gaming engine when you know nothing about programming. And they're so good at conducting this hype train and you've been on it for so long that you'll buy into whatever $400 Master Chief Special Elite Edition of whatever it is, and you'll think that it's worth every penny. And they will continue to do this as long as it fits into the confines of their gaming machine that pumps out games like your redneck neighbors pumping out those children. And inevitably, they're just gonna keep pumping out these shitty broken games if we keep hopping on this train and feeding them money into something we know nothing about. I think instead, us gamers need to do a bit of derailing. It's just something to think about. And with that said, I'm Zach Dawson. This was The Storm.